Good evening. The 65th meeting of the 73rd term of your Baltimore City Council is now called to order. Uh, for folks who um, are partaking in today's proceedings, if you could please ensure that your electronic devices are, if not turned off, at least silenced um, uh, at, at this point. So cell phones, electronic devices, whatever. Uh, at this point, our invocation this evening will be delivered by Overseer Lamont Brown of Beyond the Walls Christian Ministries. At this time, the floor is yours. Father, we thank you for this privilege and this honor to be in this place on this day. For this is the day that you've made and we're grateful and we rejoice in it. We ask, oh God, that you would forgive us for all of our sins. And as we have gathered, God, that you would set our mind on your agenda. God, we pray for each tier of leadership concerning our city. We thank you, God, for every person that's assembled in this place. We ask, God, that your spirit would abide, guide, and direct us, God, and you be glorified in our gathering. We thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. At this time now, we're going to state the Pledge of Allegiance. At this time, we're gonna have our first showcase, and it's gonna be done um, by the Oblate Sisters of Providence to the Chambers, they're with us tonight. Sister Rita Mitchell, no, Rita Michelle Proctor is gonna do the presentations. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Thank you. <clears throat> On behalf of the Oblate Sisters of Providence, the first Roman Catholic religious community of women of African descent, I greet you and I thank you. A special thank you to Dr. Dennis Castillo for doing the research that prompted this resolution that we will, re will receive today. Our presence in Baltimore, Maryland began in 1828 with the establishment of St. Francis Academy, located on East Chase Street. St. Francis continues and it is, and is in its 195th year of providing a Christian Catholic education for the children of Baltimore and beyond. We are happy to have one of our sisters, Sister Anthony Dushman, recognized and honored for her service during the cholera epidemic of 1832. She selflessly cared for those with the cholera until she contracted the disease and died. In the words of Father Nicholas Hector Joubert, our co-founder, who wrote in 1832 in his journal, I quote, this sister had a disposition that was sweet and loving. She was naturally cheerful and would have rendered a real service to the society. But God was pleased with the sacrifice she made. She was naturally kind, well known for her charity of the sick. And since she is a victim of her zest, we can, just, we can with just reason consider her a martyr of charity." End of quote. Thank you for the recognition of Sister Anthony Dushman and who gave her life in service to the people of God. May God's peace and blessing be with all of us. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Rita, uh, Michelle Proctor. Um, you know, Baltimore is f filled with history. Uh, and uh, just to kind of understand and know, uh, imagine 194 years ago, uh, in this city uh, when African-American women decided to come together uh, and establish literally uh, the first organized effort in the entire world of uh, black nuns uh, and start an institution that ultimately lives out uh, to this day uh, with really, really rich East Baltimore uh, tradition and heritage. Uh, we stand on the shoulders of your organization uh, and for all of those in attendance tonight, we literally stand on your shoulders uh, and the city council uh, wanted to recognize you in an appropriate way uh, and we wanted to bring you out tonight. So if you could all come and join me up here in the center, 
uh, we have a small token of our appreciation, respect, and love for you. Any council members that would like to join, if you guys could stand in the back and have the sisters stand in the front. Chairman Stokes said the sisters are in his district, so you know he's going to be here. Look at that picture. So the resolution reads, the City Council of Baltimore resolution, uh, be it hereby known to all that the City Council of Baltimore offers its sincerest congratulations to the Oblate Sisters of Providence in recognition of your 194 year history as the first successful Roman Catholic sisterhood in the world established by women of African descent. The entire membership extends best wishes on this memorable occasion and directs this resolution to be presented to you on this 30th day of October 2023, signed by myself, President of the City Council, Nick J. Mosby, and all other members of the council. Thank you so much. Thank you. This a this change? Police bill, police bill. They had him in the wrong committee. That's why you didn't get there. At this time, Madam Clerk, if you could please call the roll. President Mosby? Aye. Cohen? McCray? Dorsey? Conway? Schleifer? Middleton? Torrance? Burnett? Bullock? Porter? Costello? Stokes? Glover? Ramos? Mr. President, we have a quorum. Thank you so much, Madam Clerk. We will now proceed to the adoption of the journal. Madam Ms. Clerk? Mr. President, the journal for the October 16, 2023 regular meeting, regular meeting and the October 19, 2023 special meeting proceedings are on the council member's desk. Without objection, the uh, journal will be adopted. Hearing and seeing none, the journal is now adopted. Bill signed by the mayor can be found beginning on page two of tonight's agenda. We'll now turn to bills to be introduced. Madam Clerk, if you could please call the first bill. City Council Bill 23-0444, Charter Amendment, in Inner Harbor Park, for the purpose of amending the provision dedicating for public park uses the portion of the city that lies along the northwest, south, northwest and south shores of the Inner Harbor, south of Pratt Street to the water's edge, east of Light Street to the water's edge, and north of Key Highway to the water's edge from the World Trade Center around the shoreline of the Inner Harbor, and including Rashfield, to permit multifamily residential development and off-street parking within the dedicated boundaries of Inner Harbor Park and submitting this amendment to the qualified voters of the city for adoption or rejection. Sponsor Costello. The body would like to recognize sponsor of the bill. Chairman Costello, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. If I could speak on all three companion bills after the third yes, is introduced. Yes, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this bill will be assigned uh, to ECD. Madam Clerk, if you could please call the next bill. City Council Bill 23-0445, Charter Amendment, Baltimore City Police Department, for the purpose of establishing the objectives, powers, and duties of the Baltimore City Police Department, defining certain terms, creating the role of the police commissioner, and establishing the commissioner as the head of the department, providing for the appointment and confirmation of the commissioner, establishing the powers and duties of the commissioner, establishing the powers and duties of police officers, and submitting this 
Amendment to the qualified, nope, providing for police officers enjoyment of certain immunities and defenses and submitting this amendment to the qualified voters of the city for adoption or rejection. Sponsor Conway. This bill has been assigned to community as a whole. Madam Clerk, next bill. City Council Bill 23-0446, Zoning C5 IH Inner Harbor Subdistrict Amendment for the purpose of amending the description C-5-5. IH Inner Harbor Subdistrict and amending the bulk and yard regulations for the subdistrict. Sponsor Costello. This bill has been assigned to ECD. Madam Clerk, next bill. City Council Bill 23 0447, landmark list exteriors 3110 Elm Avenue for the purpose of designating 3110 Elm Avenue, block 3504B, lot 006 as a historical landmark exterior. Sponsor Ramos. This bill has been assigned to ECD. Madam Clerk, next bill. City Council Bill 23-0448, Urban Renewal Inner Harbor Project 1, Amendment 21, for the purpose of amending the Urban Renewal Plan for Inner Harbor Project 1, amending the development area controls for certain development areas, amending the land use and pro proposed zoning exhibits to the plan, waiving certain content and procedural requirements, making the provisions of this ordinance severable, providing the application of this ordinance in conjunction with certain other ordinances, and providing for a special effective date. Sponsor Costello. At this time, the body would like to recognize sponsor of the bill, Chairman Costello. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm introducing three bills today. They're companion bills uh, for the revitalization of the Inner Harbor. Uh, all of our colleagues, uh, you will be offered an opportunity to have a briefing uh, prior to hearings being scheduled on these. I've spoken with Vice President Middleton. We don't anticipate hearings for these bills until the January or February timeframe. Um, first, uh, there are three bills. Uh, the first one, 23-0444. Uh, this is a charter amendment. Uh, what this does is essentially confirm pursuant to state code, which is already in state code, uh, that commercial uses include residential uses. Uh, it expands the ground lease area from 3.2 acres to 4.5 acres, and it enables parking solely underground, completely concealed uh, from view. Uh, the second bill, 23-0446, uh, is an amendment to the C5IH zoning classification. That zoning classification uh, only exists within the 11th district. Uh, that changes the height restriction from 100 feet to unlimited height. Uh, by making this change and having the URP refer to the underlying zoning, uh, the URP then enables unlimited height. And finally, uh, Council Bill 23-0448, and that is an amendment to the Inner Harbor URP. Uh, this does a couple of things, removes development controls within the URP, it makes building requirements subject to the underlying C5 zone, enabling all uses and requirements from C5 to be utilized for uh, development areas. Uh, two, it reclassifies development area 14 from public to commercial public uh, to allow for construction of the retail component of parcel D, which you likely heard about this morning, uh, limiting the size to three stores and a maximum of 20,000 uh, gross square feet. Uh, and finally, number three, reclassifies development areas 13 and 15A, respectively, which are the Pratt Street Pavilion and the Light Street Pavilion, respectively. Uh, to commercial residential. As you may have heard uh, from the press conference uh, this morning, uh, there is an incredibly exciting effort underway to revitalize the Inner Harbor. That is an over $500 million investment uh, in that area. Uh, specifically, uh, it will include uh, residential uh, to help make the project economically viable. Uh, but more importantly than that, it opens up sight lines uh, and view corridors uh, for the Inner Harbor to make that more inclusive. Uh, for everyone, uh, and also increases the uh, public open green space uh, by almost five acres, which I think is a, a much needed uh, and necessary improvement. Uh, the project team for this has done an extensive uh, amount of community outreach, touching nearly, nearly 30,000 people throughout the city uh, through uh, community forums, community meetings, uh, door knocking, et cetera. Uh, and has really made this project about not just the neighborhoods directly surrounding the Inner Harbor, uh, but around neighborhoods throughout the city in East Baltimore, West Baltimore, North Baltimore, South Baltimore, uh, that wouldn't normally be engaged uh, about a project like this. Uh, so there will be uh, multiple opportunities for public input, uh, not just related to the three uh, bill hearings that the Council Vice President will be announcing toward the end of the year. Uh, there will be uh, UDAP hearings as well as planning commission hearings. 
Uh, specifically, there will be a UDAP uh, concept design meeting on November 16th. Uh, first planning commission hearing on the legislative package will occur on November 30th. Uh, there will be a number of developer community feedback sessions occurring throughout this process. There will be a UDAP design development meeting uh, on the master plan in January of 2024 and other milestones throughout the process. Uh, so again, each of our colleagues will have an opportunity to be briefed on this. If you'd like to get that set up, uh, please let me know. I anticipate those briefings occurring in the November, uh, mid-November to early December uh, timeframe to answer any questions that you or your constituents may have. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I think you did an amazing job kind of laying out uh, where we are with it and how we kind of proceed forward. You know, I just want to remind everybody that, you know, this is a, a, a moment in history. Uh, you know, 40 years ago, uh, folks uh, reimagined uh, the harbor, and, and now uh, us as uh, council members, as community leaders, as citizens, will be able to reimagine another Inner Harbor uh, 2.0. Um, but over 500 million in private investment alone, uh, it will significantly change um, kind of the makeup um, and the activity uh, as relates to 24 by 7, having residents, this is right on the harbor. Uh, is uh, a, a truly a, a, a huge uh, undertaking, uh, and it's going to take each and every one of us. Obviously, it's in Councilman Costello's district, uh, but it truly is a citywide uh, project. So uh, just like we had the discussion uh, about uh, um, the peninsula, I was about to say Port Covington, uh, and, and that's a citywide project. Uh, this is like it. So uh, please stay abreast of uh, all the hearings as well as all the information. I know that there's going to be a tremendous amount of questions from your constituents throughout the city uh, because, again, this is truly a citywide project. So thank you for your leadership on this effort so far. Chairman Costello, with that, uh, this bill has been assigned to ECD. Madam Clerk, please read the last bill. City Council Bill 23-0449. Excuse me, Public Safety, Baltimore City Police Department, for the purpose of repealing Subtitle 16 of the Public Laws of Baltimore City, creating a new article in the Baltimore City Code des designated Police Department, defining certain terms, requiring the promulgation of certain rules and regulations, requiring the police commissioner to maintain the records of the department, requiring that the department be composed of a certain percentage of civilian employees, establishing a procedure for redistricting police districts, providing for collective bargaining and negotiations, relating to direct compensation of police officers, establishing certain provisions relating to the qualifications, appointment, promotion, and probation of police officers, permitting police officers to earn witness fees, providing for a special effective date, and generally relating to the Baltimore City Police Department, Sponsor Conway. At this time, the body would like to recognize the sponsor of the bill, Chairman Conway, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, as many of you are aware, uh, Baltimore City is the only jurisdiction in Maryland without complete local control over its police department. In 2021, state legislators authorized a ballot initiative that would decide once and for all whether all, um, whether Baltimore City would have control of its own police department. Question H, of course, passed by a large majority in November of 2022, with nearly 83% of city residents voting in favor. However, while the ballot question was overwhelmingly approved over nearly a year ago, um, limiting language on the powers of the city as it exists um, still exists in the state law. Uh, the Baltimore City Council now has the authority to legislate on the Baltimore City Police Department, um, but it exists in a pretty gray area. Um, even though, of course, it is a Baltimore City Police Department. Uh, in coordination with the administration, I am introducing two bills on local control one for the city charter and another for the code. Uh, after these bills make their way through city council, the Maryland General Assembly will need to strike language um, in the code limiting the city council's ability to legislate over the police department this upcoming session. In order for uh, us to have our bills ready for the Maryland General Assembly in time, uh, we must begin our process now at the city. Uh, we can't wait any longer or else we'll end up risking uh, missing Annapolis's session in 2024. Um, we're working with the administration, of course, uh, the council president on these bills, because this topic is, of course, of the highest concern for the city, and it should be pre presented on a united front. So I want to thank both uh, the administrations uh, for this so far. 
Um, we also have a commitment from the Local Control Advisory Board that they will have a full report on their recommendations by the time of our first hearing on November 29th. Uh, and I want to thank them for their hard work on this topic over the last two years. Uh, bill 23-0405, mentioned earlier, is the first of two bills, and it is the Charter Amendment. Um, this is the side of the things that uh, would require approval by the voters of Baltimore in November of 2024, and it will codify charter language for the Baltimore City Police Department. 23-0449, uh, the second of the two bills, will clean up um, sorts, uh, will be a cleanup of sorts for the city code and the public local laws as we add them to the police department and the city code. It is my hope that the charter amendment and the code um, will be an end, but also a means, uh, a way to achieve the outcome that we've all been working for uh, since 2021, or honestly before 2021. And I look forward to working with you all, my colleagues, and of course the members of the public with the feedback that we'll get during these hearings, uh, because it is our duty uh, to realize uh, the will of the voters and make sure that we ensure local control for the city of Baltimore. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Again, this is another bill that obviously obviously has citywide implications. You know, many of your constituents are going to have ask questions about it. Um, you know, the problem is, you know, they voted on it a couple times through referendum uh, in the general. Uh, so many people, even lawyers and lawmakers, are like, what's the gray area? Where are we at with local control? Uh, so with that, we will probably do some type of education campaign around it. We want all council members, again, to participate, maybe like a town hall, Mr. Chair, uh, style, just so folks can kind of ask questions and understand and know uh, what they should expect uh, come uh, the council hearings, as well as uh, hopefully with the passage of this bill, what are the next steps to just like lay it out to them. So please be on the lookout uh, for that. Thank you for your leadership, Mr. Chair, on this issue. Thank you to the administration. Uh, Nina, uh, please send that thanks to the mayor uh, and all the folks that um, Mr. Chair has been working with. With that said, uh, this bill will be assigned to committee as a whole. Uh, at this time, you can find the consent calendar, uh, section A at the back of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent calendar? It's been moved and probably seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The consent calendar is approved. We will now move to bills on second reader. Before I do so, I'd like to chair it over, turn it over to Chairman Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. I move we read short titles for second and third reader for the duration of the meeting. Without objection, we will be in short titles for the duration of this meeting. Hearing and seeing none, we are in short titles. Uh, first committee we're going to go to is ECD. Madam Clerk, please call the bill. City Council Bill 23-0393, Street Encroachment, 3424 Toon Street. Body would like to recognize Vice President of the Council, Sharon Green Milton. The floor is yours. Thank you, uh, <coughs> Mr. President. Bill number 23-0393. Uh, this bill was heard on October 17th and was recommended favorable by the committee. I move the bill favorable. Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. Madam Vice President, we didn't do finding of the facts. We don't, we don't have, have to. to. We're good? All right. Um, well, this bill will be printed for third reading. Uh, was that an amendment? I'm sorry. No. That was just straight. Yeah, so this bill will be printed for third reading. Madam Clerk, if you could please read the next bill. City Council Bill 23-0394, Street Encroachment, 229 East Montgomery Street. Madam Vice President, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Bill number 23-0394. This bill was also heard on October 17th and was recommended favorably by the committee. I move the bill favorably. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. This bill will be printed for third reading. Madam Clerk. City Council Bill 23-0397, rezoning Western Side North Lehigh Street, Southwest Corner Eager Street, and Western Side North Lehigh Street, 52-7, Street 52-7 feet south of Eager Street. Madam Vice President, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, bill number 23-0397. This bill was also, this bill was heard on October 24th and was recommended favorable by the committee. And this bill did have findings of facts and is on my colleague's desk. I move the findings of fact. Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The findings of facts are now adopted. Madam VP, the floor is yours. And I move the bill favorable as amended. Second. 
It's been moved I mean, and probably. Not as amended. Yeah. I move the bill favorable. We got you. <laughs> Second. Second. It's been moved and probably seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The bill will be printed for third reading. Madam Clerk, next bill. City Council Bill 23-0399, Plain Unit Development Amendment, Benhurst Park. Madam VP, the floor is yours. Uh, bill number 23-0399. Uh, this bill was also heard on October 24th and was recommended favorable by the committee. Um, the finding of facts is on my colleague's desk. I move the findings of fact. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The final facts are adopted. Madam VP, the floor is yours. And I move this bill favorable. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The bill will be printed for third reading. Madam Clerk, the next bill. City Council Bill 23-0423, City Property, renaming Cottage Avenue Park to Candy Strike Park. Madam VP, the floor is yours. Uh, bill number 23-0423, and this bill was heard on October 17th and was recommended favorable by the committee. I move the bill favorable. Second. It's been moved and probably seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. And all those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The bill will be printed for third reading. Now we're going to turn over to rules and legislative oversight. Madam Clerk, please call the first bill. EA 23-0210, Craig B. Jeter, Bureau Head, Silent Waste, Department of Public Works. The body would like to recognize Chairman of the Committee, Chairman of the Slifer. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. The Rules and Legislative Oversight Committee held uh, these two executive nominations on October 19, 2023, and we are approaching them both favorable, so I'd like to move this nomination favorable. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. Uh, the confirmation will be noted. It's accepted. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call the next one. EA 23-0211, Anwar L. Young, member, Fair Election Fund Commission, District 7. I would like to recognize Chair of the Committee, Chairman Slifer, the floor is yours. I'd like to move this nomination favorable. Second. It's been moved and probably seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The confirmation will be noted as accepted. At this time, we'll go to third, bills on third reader. Madam Clerk, if you could please call the first bill. City Council Bill 21-0159, Procurement Zero Emission Vehicles. President Mosby, Cohen, McCray, Dorsey, Conway, Schleifer, Middleton, Torrance, Burnett, Bullock, Porter, Costello, Stokes, Glover, Ramos. This bill is approved. Madam Clerk. City Council Bill 23-0343, Zoning, Conditional Use, Conversion of a Single Family Dwelling Unit to Three Dwelling Units in the R8 Zoning District, Variances, 633 South Montford Avenue. President Mosby, Cohen, McCray, Dorsey, Conway, Schleifer, Middleton, Torrance, Burnett, Bullock, Porter, Costello, Stokes, Glover, Ramos. This bill is approved. Madam Clerk. City Council Bill 23-0356, Zoning Modifications to Research and Development Facility Use. President Mosby, Cohen, McCray, Dorsey, Conway, Schleifer, Middleton, Torrance, Burnett, Bullock, Porter, Costello, Stokes, Glover, Ramos. This bill is approved. Madam Clerk, next bill. City Council Bill 23-0361, Zoning, Conditional Use, Conversion of a Single Family Dwelling Unit to Two Dwelling Units in the R8 Zoning District, Variances, 1613 Edmonton Avenue. President Mosby, Cohen, McCray, Dorsey, Conway, Schleifer, Middleton, Torrance, Burnett, Bullock, Porter, Costello, Stokes, Glover, Ramos. This bill is approved. Madam Clerk, next bill. City Council Bill 23-0375, City Property Renaming, Reach Partnership School Field to Senator Robert L. Dalton Stadium. President Mosby. Uh, we'll just come back. Yeah, to, we're going to come back to that end. at the end. Yeah. We're going to do it at the last, the last bill. Yeah. yeah. Uh, President Mosby, Cohen, McCray, Dorsey, Conway, Schleifer, Middleton, Torrance, Burnett, Bullock, Porter, Costello, Stokes, Glover, Ramos. 
This bill is approved. Madam Clerk, last bill. Why is this double up? City streets. I'm on the wrong one. That's fine. Yep. City Council Bill 23-0396, City Streets closing a 20-foot alley and two 10-foot alleys. President Mosby, Cohen, McCray, Dorsey, Conway, Schleifer, Middleton, Torrance, Burnett, Bullock, Porter, Costello, Stokes, Glover, Ramos. This bill is approved. Uh, before we move on to committee announcements, uh, we still have one remaining bill, 23-0372. Before the clerk calls it in, I just want to let the council uh, body know uh, that the, the uh, sponsor of the bill is asking that we hold off uh, and uh, voting this out on third reader. Uh, he's still working uh, with the administration on some loose ends. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we hold um, um, that agreement in place, uh, but we want to make sure that we properly do it on the record. So we're going to read it in, uh, and he's going to request us to hold it over. Uh, we need a majority vote to hold it over, uh, and it will appear on third reading again at our next council meeting. Madam Clerk. City Council Bill 23-0372, Office of City Stat Establishment and Administration. At this time, the body would like to recognize a uh, sponsor bill, uh, Chairman Conway. Thank you, Mr. President. You've summarized it for me. Uh, still working with the administration on this bill, and so I want to make a motion to, to, hold, the, uh, to hold Council Bill 23-0372 until our next council meeting. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and properly second to hold this bill over to the next council meeting on third reading. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. This will be held over till our next meeting. Thank you, Chairman Costello. At this point, we're going to turn to committee announcements. Uh, cheers when you hear your committee. Uh, if you do have an announcement, please stand. Uh, first up, um, we're going to do, um, I'll do the committee as a whole. Um, I see my friends from all the inclusionary uh, groups back there. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, affordable housing uh, is critical uh, and very, very, really, really important uh, to this council and to this body. You know, obviously this bill uh, re replaces a bill that was in place for almost 17 years uh, that only resulted in about 37 units throughout our city, which is really shameful. Uh, this is a bill that I carried as a council member. It's a bill that I was happy uh, to work with uh, Councilwoman Ron uh, Odette Ramos. Uh, we have some loose ends to continue to kind of uh, uh, clean up and fix up, but we want to make sure that folks in 17 years can be proud of the work uh, that we've all been working on over the past uh, year. Uh, so with that, we are announcing a hearing uh, tonight, so you guys can rip your signs off. Let's do a celebration of ripping the signs off. <laughs> So uh, we're going to have a committee as a whole hearing, City Council Bill 22-195, uh, Inclusionary Housing for Baltimore City, on Tuesday, November the 14th at 5 p.m. That's Tuesday. You'll be there. Now rip them off. Let's see you rip them off. Come on. <laughs> I'm joking. And then the other bill uh, is uh, going to be assigned to the same committee, obviously, committee as a whole. That's Bill 23-03. Six nine, uh, and that is going to be on Tuesday, November the 14th, the same day at 501. So obviously they'll be heard at the same time. We do it concurrently, but that's how we do it. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you for your continued civic engagement uh, and participating in this process called the city council. Uh, with that, uh, we also have a couple other bills, guys, and committees as a whole. Uh, the next bill is 23-0445, that's the Charter Amendment for Baltimore City Police Department. Uh, that's what Chairman uh, um, Conway talked about. There are two hearing dates for that, and that's going to be Wednesday, November the 29th at 5 p.m. here in Council Chambers, as well as Wednesday, December the 6th at 1 p.m., again, here in Council Chambers. Um, the second bill, 23-0449, that's Public Safety, Baltimore City Police Department. Uh, that will be heard again on Wednesday, November the 29th at 5.31, no, at 5.30 p.m. in the City Council Chambers, as well as on Wednesday, December the 6th at 1.30 in Council Chambers. 
Actually, we have to suspend the rules uh, for those past two bills uh, for 23-0445 as well as 23-0449. Uh, so at this point, uh, I'll ask to suspend the rules for 23-0445, Charter Amendment, Baltimore City Police Department. Have a motion on the floor? It's been moved and probably seconded. Uh, do we need to take roll call on this? Uh, we don't need, uh, it's been moved and probably seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. Uh, those hearings will be announced. I'll do it again just for the record. Uh, that is Wednesday, November 29th at 5 p.m. here in City Council Chambers, as well as Wednesday, December the 6th at 1 p.m. here in Council Chambers. Uh, we also put in a motion to suspend the rules uh, to allow us to announce the meeting tonight, 23-0449. Motion on the floor. Is there a second? second? It's been moved and probably seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, please say nay. Uh, the ayes have it to announce again on the record. That is 23-0449. Uh, that will be on Wednesday, November the 29th at 530 uh, in Council Chambers, as well as Wednesday, December the 6th in Council Chambers. With that said, now we're going to call up our amazing Vice President, Sharon Green Middleton, for ECD announcements. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have one cancellation, one to reschedule, and three uh, new schedules. So the Economic and Community Development Committee has canceled the uh, bill number 23-0439, zoning variance, um, 16, 6709 Western Run Drive because it has to be heard by the Planning Commission first and then we'll reschedule that one. Um, bill number 23-0351 um, was originally scheduled to be heard on October 24th and it has been rescheduled to December 5th at 2.20 p.m. here in Council Chambers. And then Bill number 23-0429 will be heard on Tuesday, November 7th, 2023 at 2.40 p.m. here in Council Chambers. And that's the Community Impact District Management Authority Board of Directors. And Bill number 22 Dash 0290 will also be heard on November 7th, 2023 at 2.50 p.m. here in Council Chambers, and that's the South Baltimore Gateway Community Impact District Management Authority Board of Directors Term Limits uh, Sponsored Porter. And on, and Bill number 21-0117 will be heard on Tuesday, January 9th. We're in the January already, um, at 2 p.m. here in Council Chambers, and that's the termination of administrative parking regulations, and the sponsor is Councilwoman Ramos. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Vice. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Next up, Education, Workforce, and Youth. Chairman Stokes, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. The Education, Workforce, and Youth Committee will hold a hearing on Thursday, November the 16th at 5 o'clock on Bill number 23-018R, and it's the hearing on athletic trainers in Baltimore. We know what happened to Elijah Gorham over at Mervo, and I think we owe his family and all the athletes and athletes that want to play sports in that city to make sure they have athletic trainers actually at all those sports events. Also the same day, uh, the Education Workforce and Youth Committee will hold a hearing 23-0190R at 501, and that is a hearing on Baltimore City Schools payments to vendors. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you so much, Chairman Stokes. Next up, we're going to go to Health Environment Technology. Thank you, Madam Chair. Public Safety Government Operations, uh, Rules Legislative Oversight, Ways and means. Do you have ways and means or no? For what? Oh, for ways and means? Yeah. Uh, at this time, the body would like to recognize Councilman Burnett. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, on Monday, December 18, 2023, at 5 p.m., the Biennial Audits Oversight Commission will hold its next meeting uh, in Council Chambers. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Thank you. And then last and certainly not least, finance and performance. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Mr. President and colleagues. On uh, Thursday, November 9th at 3 p.m., the Finance and Performance Committee will be having an agency briefing for the Baltimore City Police Department. That's here in Council Chambers at 3 p.m. And then on Thursday, November 16th at 3 p.m. here in Council Chambers, uh, the Finance and Performance Committee will have an agency briefing for the Department of Public Works. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now we're going to go to regular announcements. I have to make a public apology. Uh, leading up to the 135th Poly City game, I talked a lot of smack in this building and all throughout the city of Baltimore, and uh, we got absolutely destroyed. As you can see, Madam Clerk is still wearing her black and orange, uh, but I wanted to just make a public apology about all the stuff I talked, and for 12 years in a row, we lost again. With that, with that, are there uh, any other uh, regular announcements? Uh, Councilwoman Ramos, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I have a moment of silent request, a moment of silence request for uh, J. Frederick Motts. He was a senior judge in the U.S. District Court, and uh, one of my constituents uh, recently passed away. Thank you. Any other regular announcements? Hearing and seeing none, Madam Vice President, if you could take us out. The next regular meeting of the Baltimore City Council will be held on Monday, November 6, 2023 at 5 p.m. At this time, we will recognize a moment of silence for the now 224 victims of homicide this year. Also, uh, Senior Judge J. Frederick Motts and just our continued prayers for our uh, fire department and their families as uh, we continue to get through the uh, funeral arrangements for the second firefighter this, this Friday. Thank you. their term of your Baltimore City Council. Baltimore, we absolutely love you. <laughs>